Shalom. Welcome to King James Bible University. I am Elder Fields, and we're going to get ready to get started again. We welcome you tonight. We pray that you be blessed this evening as we break bread and we dive into these scriptures. All right. Praise God. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And let's get ready to roll. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. So we are in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. It reads, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. All right, this is from Paul. And so to find out a little bit about Paul real quick, let's go to Romans. Actually, let's go to Titus 1. Same Paul that wrote, Corinthians is here. Paul is a servant of Yahweh, an apostle of salvation Jehovah or salvation of the anointed way, which is Jehovah, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. He goes on to speak of the hope that he has of eternal life, which Yahweh that cannot lie promised before the world began but hath in due time to manifest his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. The point we want to look to is that the word is manifest through preaching, and that preaching must be according to the commandment of God, Yahweh, our Savior. All right? To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, peace, from Yahweh the Father, and from the Creator of salvation, the anointed way, our Savior, which is Jehovah. Now, let's go back to Romans. One, Paul, a servant of salvation, the anointed way, which is Jehovah, called to be an apostle, separated unto the message of Yahweh. Then he goes on to say, which was which he had promised before time by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So that message is consistent in the Holy Scriptures. And that message is concerning Yahweh's servant, capital, Yahweh Shai, or salvation, the anointed way, our creator which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So the spirit of Christ takes his abode and upon the man who is made of the seed of David. And that spirit that's working in him is the son of God. The flesh is not. But the spirit that works in him as the son of God. It says he declared to be the son of God with power, the servant of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. All right, so let's go back. Second Corinthians 11. I had to redo this because I had some dead spots. This mic keeps cutting off. Second Corinthians 11, we read verse two down to four. What I'm going to look at right now is verse 2. 
It says, for I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy, with godly jealousy, for I have espoused, key word here, espoused, you, Israel, to what? One husband. The people he's talking to are Hebrews. That I represent you as a chaste, pure one to Christ. The reason being, we know they're Hebrews because Paul tells us, I think it's Romans 7, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. The law was only given to Israel. But we lost it. And so when he calls us back to it, we got to embrace it. So he speaks to those that know the law. So in 2 Corinthians, St. Paul is addressing those that know the law. 11.4. Okay, 11.2. Now, we got to see where we were espoused and how we were espoused and where those vows were made and how we kind of fell off following the world. We fell into condemnation. And now Paul is saying, I brought you back to this knowledge because in this time frame, the way of salvation has been made a little more clear. And the prophets and the apostles are teaching the way of truth to, to, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10. Look at the origin of the pledge, the oath, the vow. Deuteronomy 10, 12. Now Israel. When you see Israel, think of walking in spirit. Now Israel, what doeth the spirit of God, thy God, require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, this is a requirement, and to love, promise him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Spirit of God and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. That's what we have to do. So we made a vow. Like when a woman marries her husband and she says I do let's go to Exodus 19 and kind of look at that 19.5 now therefore if ye will obey my voice my instructions my commandments and deed and works and keep my covenant then ye shall be unto me a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine 6 excuse me 6 and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Seven, Moses calls all the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Spirit of God commanded him. Here's the pledge or the vow or the I do. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Spirit of God or all that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. That's how we entered into the pledge or the covenant right there. Now, in between this and what we're about to look to in Jeremiah, there's going to be a falling away. Remember, we're talking about Paul says, I have espoused you to one husband. All right? God. Is not a harlot God, and we shouldn't be a harlot people. We can only serve one master. Jeremiah 2, 2 through 4. Go cry in the ears of Jerusalem, which is Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee in the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wendest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, said the Lord. This is what we this is what we were supposed to be doing. This is what we were doing when we first got into this walk as a people. Hear ye the word of the Spirit of God, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. 
Jacob deals with the flesh. Israel deals with the spirit. Let's move on to Jeremiah 3. Now, this is what we should have been doing. But then the Lord presents a question before I get to Jeremiah 3. He says, Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me? So, you know, after Joshua died, there was a falling off. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and become worthless? Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and pits, through the land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt, verse 7 and then verse 8. And I brought you into a plentiful country, that's the promise, to learn the fruit, the works thereof, and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered into that thing, ye defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The Lord, the priest said not, where is the spirit of God or where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. Now, that was the major problem. The pastors also forgot. They transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by another spirit, by Baal, and walked after things that did not profit. Wow. Now, we, we were supposed to be espoused to him moving, but then there's this falling out. Read Jeremiah 2 and 3, those chapters, you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised. I mean, not surprised, but it'll shake your heart. Jeremiah 3.12. Hear the word of the Lord. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel. Save the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, save the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, save the Lord. I am married to you. That's what Paul is bringing us back into that knowledge in 2 Corinthians 11, 4. I mean, 11, 2. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, the Spirit of God, I am married unto you. I will take you, one of a city, two of a family, and bring you to Zion. Understand, everybody is not going to be willing to let go of the world. But when we hear his voice, let us not harden our heart, and let's go after the truth with all our might. Because if you're hearing it, that means he's giving us an opportunity. Verse 15, and I will give you pastors feeders according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding along with wisdom but what do we got to do verse 13 only acknowledge thine iniquity you acts of sin that thou hast transgressed against the, the spirit of god thy guide and has scattered thy ways to strangers under every green tree even moving after these trees and have not obeyed my voice my instructions save the lord that was the problem. Let's go back to Second Corinthians eleven. Let's go to verse three. Verse three says, But however, but means however, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So we better learn what these scriptures mean.
right, we're back. Silly machine. This be my third time trying to get this thing to work correctly. It's just driving me crazy. So the serpent tells her, you should not surely die. Verse 4. So he's creating unbelief to, to, to jive with her flesh. Because now he's going to speak for God, but he's lying. He says, for God do know the day that ye eat or learn thereof, your eyes shall be opened, your understanding will be opened. And you should be as God's knowing good and evil. And she takes the hook, line, and sinker. So she's being beguiled by the words of the serpent. Let's go back to Colossians. Enticing words are used by these lying prophets to beguile. Okay. It says, man should beguile you with enticing words. Verse 8, beware lest any man spoil. So as they beguile, they're going to spoil through philosophy and vain deceit. They're going to be teaching after the traditions of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Verse 18, this is a responsibility we must have. We says, we, he says, let no man beguile you for your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of messengers, intruding into those things which he have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So these preachers, these agents of chaos, these um, workers of the ancient honorable, they'll use these words to deduce you out of your purpose and out of the way of truth. So we have to be very careful who we learn from and we got to make sure we stay in the book in the scriptures. Now, Paul says that as the serpent beguiled Eve through his trickery, his smooth words, so our minds should be what? Corrupted. Let's take a look at how this corruption comes. Corrupted. Deuteronomy 9. We're doing this for the, over and over. Twelve and thirteen. Lord help me. I hope this machine don't mess up again. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence for thy people. So God is telling the Spirit of God is telling Moses, these are now your people. <laughs> Thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, have corrupted themselves. How did they do it? We're going to find out. That's a full thought. They are quickly turned aside out of the way, out of the path of righteousness, which I commanded them. That way is the path of righteousness. They have made unto them a molten image, so they're caught up in idolatry. That's corrupting. Verse 13. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, remember, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone, that I may destroy them and blot out their way from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. Thank God that Moses stood in the gap. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Showing us about corruption. Remember. The one who brought us, our forefathers out of Egypt was Christ. He is the rock. His work is perfect for his, all his ways of judgment, doctrines, and teachings. It's going to explain he's the God of truth, and without acts of sin, he's just and right, is he. But what happened? They, the children of Israel, have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and a crooked generation. We became a foolish and unwise people. We became a corrupted generation, another generation. Let's go to Judges 2, 9 through 13. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Herez, in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill of Gosh, speaking of Joshua, and also all the generations 
all the generation were gathered unto their fathers. These are those that came up with Joshua. And there arose another, here's the key, another generation after them, which knew not the Lord. They didn't know, really, really know the truth like they should. They knew not the Lord, nor yet the works. They didn't know the works which he had done for Israel. They, they, in other words, they weren't moving in the spirit. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served an idol, Balaam. And they abandoned the Lord, their God of their fathers, God of Israel, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage, and followed other gods, the gods of the people that were round about them. So if we get caught up following the world around about us, we're going to be corrupted and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the spirit of God's anger. And they forsook or abandoned the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtoreth. Wow. All because of the spirit of Satan that works and looks for the heart of disobedience, the subtility of this serpent. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So who is this? Who is the employee of employer of this subtle creature or person or people that have a split fork tongue who speak lies? Let's go to Isaiah nine fifteen. The ancient and honorable, that's speaking of Satan, he's the head. He's the head of all these systems that are against truth. And the prophet, those mouthpieces that work for him, they teach lies. He's the tail. Let's read it again. The ancient and honorable, he's the head. Well, thought, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. And if we get caught up following these type of folk, it says the leaders of this people cause them to err. Who's leading? prophets that teach lies. We see it every day on TV, in them churches, on them street corners. And they that are led of them are destroyed. So we better watch what we who we learn from. Let's go to Proverbs 5, verse 3. I'm trying to move this quick so this machine don't mess up on me. Now, that spirit that works through the ancient honorable is this strange woman. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Those, those polished words she uses. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, and her steps take hold of hell. So we got to escape. You don't get caught up in the beguiling of this strange woman. That's why the Spirit of God tells us in 1 John 4, verse 1, Promise one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets, false mouthpieces, false teachers are going out into the world. And this takes us to the main verse, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another message, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So that beguiling Joker may show up with another message. That's why we got to make sure we understand the truth over the lie. Now, the word here, Jesus, means salvation. Let's go to Matthew one twenty one. He's going to preach another Jesus. But we're going to take a look at the Bible, the Bible Jesus. Matthew one twenty one. Here's the prophecy. And she shall bring forth a son lower case, that's a child, 
and thou shalt call his way Jesus. Notice it's all caps. The way of that child should be Jesus. He's going to move in the way of salvation. For he shall save his people from their sins who? Salvation will save the people. Flesh can't save anybody. So flesh has to be brought under subjection and submitted to the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God, as it works, operates through the vessel, the way of salvation is made known. Okay? Let's go to verse 25. And he knew her not, speaking of Joseph. That means he knew her already, so that's how they had a son. But he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he, who Joseph named him, called his way salvation. Right? So the question is, what, who is salvation? Is a man's salvation according to the scriptures? Remember, Paul already told us in 1 Corinthians 11, 4, that if someone come preaching another Jesus, we better be careful. So we live in a world full of religions, full of doctrines. You got Christian doctrine, you got camp doctrine, you got a variety of churches, you got all types of films coming out pushing an image they'll call it Jesus. You got the the film series called, I think, The Chosen. You got all kind of movies coming out, supposed to be biblical, pushing these images, but do those things line up with truth? And those those movies and films and people and books and everything that's being pushed actually is a deception. Because the only place you're going to find truth is in the Sovereign King James Bible with the Apocrypha. Precept on precept, line up on line. You're not going to find it in a movie studio. They'll teach you about dinosaurs and apologetics and spaceships and all of that stuff. You get all these types of Jesus. The Mormon Jesus. Christian Jesus. They're all Gentiles. Got a Jesus in the Baptist church, an apostolic Jesus, which is another Jesus. You got all these types of Jesuses that are being pushed. But do they line up with scripture? Can the Copeland and Creflo preach a Jesus that went down to hell that was in torment? You got, uh, what's that guy out of Baltimore? Um, he went to Atlanta. I forgot that guy's name. He's preaching about a homeboy Jesus. Got the people excited, thinking they're going to get money. He preaching a, a carnal Jesus that's supposed to be the uh, genie in the bottle. But all these Jesuses how do they relate to the biblical Jesus? That's the one we should follow. We should understand that when we see the name Jesus, it ref it means salvation. So we're going to put salvation there. We're going to focus on salvation. Now, remember, Paul said if they come preaching another, so another means different. Luke 7. Let's take a look. Luke seven nineteen. Luke seven nineteen. Start at sixteen. And there came fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. They were speaking of Yahweh or Jesus, who is truly indeed a great prophet, including that God had visited his people. How does God visit? Through the mouthpiece. It was word by a spirit. Remember, God is a spirit. God ain't flesh. So God will visit through the word that's spoken by the mouthpiece. And this is, and this rumor went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region around about. And the disciples of John showed him all these things. They began to give John a report of what was going on. And John, which means God has been had been gracious, 
calling unto him his two disciples, sent them to Jesus, which means salvation, saying, Perfection and beauty, art thou he which should come, or should we look for another? You got to confirm the right way to go. When the men were come to him, they said, John the Baptist, John the Condemner, sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or should we look for another? But the prophet was doing the works of the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God was upon him and within him. He was a vessel that the Spirit of God was using. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and evil, of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind that had no knowledge, he gave sight, he gave understanding. How? Through the Spirit that was working upon him. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, So when the prophet speaks, who's speaking through the prophet? Christ. Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. To the poor the message is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So the key is, we better make sure we're following the right path. Let's go back to Matthew 3, 13. It says, then cometh, we're going to look at Jesus' encounter with John. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee unto Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Here we see Jesus, the prophet, the man, who's presenting his body as a living sacrifice, who's preparing himself to be a habitation for the spirit. He comes to John to be condemned of him. But God has been gracious, has condemned him with, with, with knowledge. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. And Jesus answered and said, unto him suffered to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness is the law. So you got to fulfill what's written in the book. Flesh has to be condemned. And Jesus, when he was baptized or condemned, went straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. So what came out of heaven was the Spirit of God. That was Christ coming upon this vessel that had been prepared and the flesh had been put down and look a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved servant capital who's the servant the spirit of God with whom I'm well pleased the spirit of God is Jehovah after the prophet Jesus was baptized and the Spirit of God began to dwell and move and reign upon him, then that same Spirit led him into the wilderness that the man could be tempted, because God cannot be tempted with evil, so the Spirit of God is not tempted. But you know, we follow God, we got to go wrestle with the devil sometime. So the Howish of Jesus has to go, he got to be proven. All right? So that test has to come. Let's go to show you that. So if he's being tested, that means he's a man. Deuteronomy 18, 18. Speaking of the prophet. And the word of and the spirit of God said to me, I have, they have spoken well, which have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet. He will raise up a prophet in Israel from among their brethren. The prophet will be a Hebrew, like unto thee, like Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command. I shall command him. And it's come to pass that whosoever shall not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my way, I will require it of him. But the prophet that shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the way 
of other gods or idols, even their prophets will die. But the prophet that he shall send, they shall speak the word that's commanded. I'm showing you that Jesus was a prophet. Remember we read earlier that they said a great prophet had showed up. They were speaking of Jesus. But the the, the Jesus of Christianity, they're going to tell you he's God. I'm talking about the man. He's a prophet. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, so this son was born, this child was born, becomes a man. He was brought forth of Bethlehem, Judah, this child. He has to grow into manhood. And then Christ will work with him. Luke 2.21 And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, the one who was brought forth in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Judah, his way was altogether named or called Jesus. Salvation. Salvation has to be, that name salvation was sent out of heaven to be put upon that child because God was going to use that vessel to demonstrate to us the way of salvation. It says, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now remember, conception comes when the human sperm meets a human egg and there's conception. Everything produces after its own kind. That child is human, 100%. Nothing more, nothing less. But it has to be prepared by wisdom, not to understand about the parents teaching him the way of their culture and by him embracing the scriptures. And he prepare his body as he gets older to become a vessel for God to use. But according to the scriptures, Jesus was a child. He's a man. He's human. All right. It says, and he came by spirit into the temple, speaking of Simeon the prophet. And when the parents brought in the child, human, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law. They had to do after the custom of the law because he's a Hebrew child of the house of David because his father was of the house of David. He was Joseph. That's how the biology works, my brother and my sister. Don't believe the lie of that other Jesus they told you in church that he was half God, half man. That's a lie. That's a deception. That's another Jesus. All right. Then Simeon took him up in his arms and blessed Yahweh and said, Creator, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy words for my understanding or my eyes have seen thy salvation. He saw the vessel that Spirit of God was going to use to demonstrate to Israel how to return back to the covenant, walk circumspectly, and receive salvation. He says, which thou art prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to the Gentiles, while we were living like Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. It says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken. His father and mother of the child marveled. And Simeon blessed them, gave them knowledge, and gave them understanding, gave them wisdom by the Spirit of God that was in him. And said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, remember this child except for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. So some will fall, some will rise. You know how they handle this knowledge that's coming forth, this pathway that's being made straight, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce thy, through thy soul, thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So remember the declaration. They had to name him Jesus. All caps, speaking with salvation. All right, let's go to Exodus 6, 2.
this is where my computer messed up last time. I got to move quick. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. I appeared unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by my way, God Almighty, by spirit. But by my way, my name, my way, Jehovah, which is Christ, I was not known unto them. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't know him as Jehovah or as Christ. They perceived the Lord to be Father or the God Almighty because he appeared because he's a spirit. He appeared as in that manner. All right. Now, the Lord, remember when God created heaven and earth, Genesis 1 verse 2, God spoke the word and then the spirit began to move upon the face of the deep and create what God has spoken. So the spirit of God or the Lord is that agent of putting forth that work. Now, he appeared unto Moses as the creator, I mean, as the spirit of God. And he begins to break down that that means he's Jehovah. All right, let's go to Exodus 15, verse 2. Because I want to show you something real careful here. Exodus 15, 2. It says, the Lord is my strength and song. He's become my salvation. He is my guide, and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. That's what Moses confessed. So that Lord is Jehovah, which is the spirit of God, which is Christ, is my strength and my song. And the same thing, he says, he's become my salvation. Now, Isaiah going to pick up the same thought and tell us that. Key thing we want to look also look here is Moses is saying he must prepare the spirit of God a habitation. Because he don't dwell in buildings made with hands. All right? He's gonna dwell in the heart of his people. Isaiah 12, 2. I'm trying to move this along quicker. It's my third time trying to get this done. Remember, God is my salvation. That God right there is Yahweh, the Father. Remember, God is my salvation. I will trust and be not afraid. Then it's going to give some clarity. For the spirit of God, Jehovah, which is Christ, is my strength and my song. Isn't that what Moses said in Exodus 15 too? He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw knowledge out of the wells of salvation. So Christ is become our salvation. The spirit of God has become our salvation. Jehovah has become our salvation. That's the same message the prophets preached. If you would go back and read Jeremiah chapter 2 and 3, you'll pick up some good notes and some good understanding in there about this and see what happened to us and why we're in the situation we're in today and what we have to do to recover because Jehovah is our salvation. That word is coming out of heaven to draw us back into the way of truth. Now let's go to Jeremiah 3, verse 20. 320, it says, Surely a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. So instead of walking in that oath, we dealt treacherously. How? He says, A voice was heard in the high places, in them churches, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel. So they in them imminent places, them high places, what were they doing? For they have perverted their way and have forgotten the Spirit of God, their God. That's what happened in those imminent places called churches where Christ does not dwell, neither the Father. So when we were in those buildings, on Sundays and in those camps, some of y'all in camps, you're getting a perverted message. And it's going to cause you to forget the, the way of the truth because you won't know it. And it'll lead you to destruction. That's why we got to be careful who we learn from. Let's go to Galatians 1. 
I don't want to go this fast, but I got to. I want to make sure this computer don't mess up again. Galatians 1 6. How did they pervert themselves? Here it goes. Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ, unto another gospel. It's a different message, which is not another. There's only one, but they did what? They perverted it. But there be some that trouble you. They're going to trouble you with their lies and their heresies and would pervert the message of Christ. That's what they did. But though, but Paul says, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other message unto you than which ye have, we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if, I pre, if any man preach another gospel, Unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. So, how do we deal with the other, the those who push another gospel, another message? We got to see them as a curse and separate from them, and destroy their doctrine. It's warfare. They're accursed. Don't want to be linking up with the accursed thing. It's going to get you destroyed. Remember, Aiken. Their ways are accursed. Therefore, it says, once again, 2 Corinthians 11, 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another message, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Why? And know that they are cursed. Why they are cursed? Because they are, they are being led by another spirit. Let's go to, I believe, I didn't have it in my notes, but Thessalonians. I think it's chapter 5. It says, I'm going to find that verse. It's not in my notes. It says, um, Satan make his messengers, uh, messengers of righteousness. Let me take a look here real, real fast, one second. This wasn't in my note, it just hit my mind right now. Second, that's it. Um, hope this thing will mess up. I'm gonna have to search it out one second. Bear with me, give me a moment. I want to make sure I find that right word. The enemy will trouble us. Okay. One second, one second, one second. Bear with me. Second Thessalonians two nine. That's one of one. Okay, Second Thessalonians two nine. Two nine. 
two five or two seven. Let's start there. It says, For the mystery of iniquity is already work. Only he who will now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the creator shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, means his doctrine, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. That's what these false teachers are. They, they come with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So if we if we get get um be gone by that serpent, what's gonna happen? And we stay there. It says, For this cause God shall give them up to strong delusion. That's why many are in camps or in churches, because they will believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So we got to be very careful. Let's go back for a second. Second Thessalonians, Second Corinthians, chapter eleven. Speaking of those who preach another gospel. And preach another Jesus. It says, Paul says, But what I do, I will do that I may cut off occasion from them that desire occasion, that wherein they they glory, they may be found even as we. He says, For such are false apostles, those are the guys that preach another Jesus, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. But they're not. And no marvel, for Satan himself, the angel himself is transformed into a messenger of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So look at verse 15 again. It says, therefore, it is no great thing if his, who is Satan, the angel honorable's prophets, also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So how shall you be able to discern them? Through the word. Precept on precept. Okay, I'm back. This machine did it again. I need a new machine. This thing is just driving me crazy. So it's no marvel that Satan himself becomes an angel of light. And his ministers, ministers of righteousness, but they're actually liars. So we got to watch and escape. Let's go to Jeremiah 3.22. Remember in 21, it says a voice was heard in high places. So every week, every Sunday, they're in these places howling and screaming and dancing. But if we're in those places, we've done treacherous, we, we have dealt treacherously against the Spirit of God. So he says a voice was heard in the high places, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel, for they perverted their way, being a Christian, being in a camp, being in a church. And they have forgotten the Lord, because they abhorred the perfection and beauty, which is the word of God. He says, return ye backsliding children. Get out of those places. And I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee. For thou art, thou, for thou perfection and beauty, the spirit of God, our God. So we got to return and embrace the truth. And understand this point, truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. If you're hoping for salvation in places where salvation is not offered, because Christ ain't there and the Father's not there and the Word is not there and the wisdom of God is not there, like in a church, 
with these other Jesuses and other messages and other ministries, it's vain to be there because salvation's not there. Or in these multitude of kingdoms, multitude of mountains looking for salvation. They said salvation is here, and then some people believe salvation is getting a new car or a house. Go sow a seed, and you'll get, you get a new house. And they run there, you get a seed. Understand where salvation is. It says, truly, in the Spirit of God, in Jehovah, is our, truly, in Jehovah, our God is the salvation of Israel. So our salvation is only in the Spirit of God. It's not in the flesh. It's not in man. It's not in the wisdom of man. It's in the Spirit of God. You got to come out of the shame, out of the confusion, out of these whorehouses, and return and move out to the Spirit of God. We got to do it. Let me go back to Jeremiah 2 and show you what happened. Hold on. This is wild. This is what happened in these churches. This is what God says. And this is the result of following another message. Trying to be like the world. He says, Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, meaning these curses, and that thou was hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way to get off the course? And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? You're in the house of bondage to gain understanding of the knowledge of Sihor or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? You're running out your own will to drink, to gain understanding of the knowledge of that river. He says, thine own wickedness shall correct thee. That's why he put these curses on us and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken or abandoned the spirit of God, thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, my desire is not in thee, save the Lord, save Jehovah. I mean, save Yahweh. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree, thou wanderest playing a harlot. Yet I had planted the noble vine and the holy right seed. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant unto a strange vine unto me? Why? Because we went a whoring, listening to these wrong teachers and these false preachers, and they stripped us of everything because it's our own fault. And then they gave us their own version, gave us religion, gave us a way that seemeth right by the end of destruction calling it salvation, but it's false. We got to get off it. Come back to this word. Come back to this covenant. How can you get the kingdom of heaven? You got unclean things in your heart, mind, and spirit along in your body. He called us to be a holy people, a separated people, and we got to return. So when we, when we are out here and we come across these things and we find something that's a curse, Call it a curse. Bring the word and, and then bounce. Check out what he says. He says, For though thou wash thee with nighter and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord. So we can't even cleanse ourselves unless we return to Christ, to the Spirit of God. How canst thou say I'm not polluted? I have not gone out to Balaam. See thy way in the valley and know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary, like a, a camel. A camel is an unclean beast. And that's how we were. It says, we were as wild asses in the wilderness that snuffed up the wind at her pleasure, running after our own will. In occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her 
will not weary themselves in her month. They shall find her. He says, withhold not, withhold thy foot, thy desire from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou sayest, there is no hope. No, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. So the stranger seduced us with enticing words, like the serpent in the, in, in the garden, and we have to come back. He says, a thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They and their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets, saying what? A stock. Saying to a piece of wood, thou art my father, and to a stone thou hast brought me forth. You got to come out of these things. For they have turned their back toward me, and not their face. He sought his understanding. But in time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. But where are the, your gods that thou hast made that thou hast made thee. So where is that God in that church? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of trouble, for according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. This is what happens when we end up falling to the wayside. He says, verse 31, O generation, see the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore say my people, we are lords. We will not, we will come no more unto thee. So we want to be our own rulers. We got to return. See all that, all that, um, that understanding is the way of the heathen, the way of the Gentile, being his own God, his own way. We got to return. Verse, chapter 3, verse 1. I'm about to close in a minute. I had to alter this teaching a few times because of my equipment. It says, they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return to her again? That's the question. No, you can't. He says, shall not the land, the people be greatly polluted? Yeah. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. We did that. Yet return again to me, said the Lord. So in spite of all that we've done, he's calling us back. That's why salvation had to show up. It had to be made manifest. That's why he had to send his prophets. In these last days, he spoke through to us through Yahweh And we have to come back. And so when we see those strange voices teaching, saying, behold, salvation is here, salvation is there, we got to escape, we got to run from it. Because there is no salvation in religion. There's no salvation in flesh. Flesh has to be put away. We got to mortify the deeds of the body. and We got to walk after Christ. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. Remember, he says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent those false teachers beguiled Eve through his subtility. We got to put ourselves there. We can't be into that group. We don't want our minds to be corrupted from Christ, from the truth. So what do, should we do if one cometh preaching another Jesus or another message, teaching something that should not be taught? We got to separate from it. In those eminent places, at the head of every corner, made with the hands of men, even where men shout and say, where is your father from? All those places of perverted assemblies, full of harlotry and whoredoms. They're pumping and pushing another message, another salvation, and another Jesus. They're built on a belief system that's carnal, 
that's ungodly and wicked. What we have to do is leave them. We got to separate ourselves from all these things and follow after the way of salvation, which is Jehovah, our guide, and our truth. We got to choose life and forsake the way of error. So when Jehovah showed up, he brought salvation. Let's go a couple more verses, and I'm going to stop. Salvation is through the word. That almighty word, this is what came down upon Jesus, the prophet. That almighty word leaped down from heaven out of thy royal throne as comparing a fierce man of war into the midst of a people of destruction. And we got to embrace this word and let it work in us the way of righteousness. I'm about to close. I pray that this finds you blessed. I, I kind of rushed through it. This is my third time trying to do this thing because of all these technical issues I had with this uh, mic system. It's, it's something with the software and the computer. But I want to thank you for your patience. And I want to thank you for taking time with us. And may the Lord bless you. And let us remember, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. And that way is the way of precepts, the way of the Spirit, the way of the Lord. Because only through his precepts can we get understanding. And as we get this understanding and we begin to know how to separate ourselves and spot the counterfeit versus the true, then we'll hate every false way. So with that, if someone come to you preaching another Jesus, or teaching another message, which the prophets, the apostles, and the precepts don't push, we would do very well just to walk away from them. Count them as accursed. All right? This is Elder Fields, and I'm signing out one last time. Shalom.